Tell me about, you grew up in, you were born in, was it Madisonville? No, I was born in New Orleans. Ah. We were, uh, it was only the last couple of children my mother had that was born. The baby was born in the hospital and then the others. But my mother's mother was a midwife. So she delivered, isn't this the funniest thing? She delivered all my mother's children. So you see, when my mother became pregnant, she would come here for her mother to deliver her babies. So we were born, most of us, in New Orleans, but then we were brought back home and we came up in Madisonville. And your mother had how many children? My mother had 14. She raised 11 of us. 14 children? Yes. Yes. Again, I think these days, m you most of they, 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 they couldn't imagine it. Well, you couldn't do that today. The pace is just too much for women today. Um, and lifestyles are different. Children are involved in so many things today. It's just, you just could not have that many children. It's unbelievable when a person like my daughter would have eight. That's rare because it's a pace that would drive you. You would have to be an extraordinary person to be able to do all the things that children require today. You just what was it? What was what was it like for you growing up in Madisonville, one of ele fourteen or eleven children? And the top of the line. My mother lost her first child when she was about 18 months old, and I was then born then. So I'm the top of the line of those that are living. Hard, I thought. Um, when I look back, it was good days, fun days. We didn't have much. Uh, being born in 1923, you're coming through depression, so you don't have anything. So if you're a person like I am, um, you're always reaching for something that you don't have uh, and you don't see any way of getting it. Um, you're always dreaming, always dreaming for, for better things and just working and taking it day at a time. How big but, was Madisonville? Is it, was it a... Oh, it's a very small town. It is growing now, not in area, you know, in, in miles and things, but the town is becoming a little bit more lively because some of the wealthy people now are moving out of the big cities and going into the outlying parishes. But it was very small. Um, you, you knew everybody, and it's not like that anymore. You don't do it. What was the, what was the mixture of, of blacks and whites? Oh... Uh, Oh, we had, we had a lot of blacks in Madisonville then, but it was a strange town to come up in. It was strange. You lived next door to the whites, or they lived next door to you. Um, sometimes, you know, you know, in the country things are, when I say next door, it's just not like New Orleans. It's maybe houses down the road a piece. And we lived in the house, and, and next door to my daddy's field or garden, was the richest person in the town, the Dendiggers. They were the wealthy people. They had the lumber yards and they had the grocery stores and, and they were wealthy people. So, and we were the poor people. <laughs> but you lived like that. And sometimes I, I think that kind of helps you to, that sometimes you don't realize your situation when you're that close to something a little higher. What did you have? What kind of contact did you have with the wealthy people, with Nothing. the wealthy white people? Say hello to them when you pass by them. Maybe you'd wave at Anna May when she was playing with mud cakes in her yard or something like that. You worked for them. You worked in their houses. So you got to know them. You got to learn about them, and they got to learn about you. Um, if my daddy grew okra or whatever, you could give them some, cross the fence, that kind of thing. But it wasn't a, a, a friend, it was a friend, it wasn't a, you know, a close relationship with whites and blacks. You were still black and they were still white, you know. <coughs> but it was strange the way we lived. I remember <laughs> they had two boys, uh, J.B. Mir, was, who was white, Lionel Heiser, who was black. 
they couldn't get along. No, if they saw each other in the streets, that was a fight for sure. They would fight every time they saw each other. But they would have a good fist fight. Mr. Meir would be sitting down there, everybody passing on the street. Nobody said anything. That was their problem. Nobody interfered. That was, it's strange now that I think about it. Nobody interfered with it. Who got beat, got beat. They just went home and that was the end of that. And now, this is very different from the kinds of stories that most people hear when they, when they hear about the South, you know. Yeah. Because normally, a black man would never fight a white man. No. Because he would be destroyed and he his be family destroyed. could be destroyed. It wasn't that it, way. It wasn't like that in Mexico. It wasn't that way, no. Uh, why not? You had a, <laughs> I don't know why. So for some uncanny reason, you had a little bit of respect for one another, as I remember, because they walked. You know, the black people worked for the white people, and that was just it. And you had maybe some of the poor whites, you know, you always had this. I remember working for Mrs. Kep, and she was a trip and a half. She was a nice lady, and she had a boarding house. And she used to refer to some of the people. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, Leah, no. That's white trash. I don't believe you. You call those people names. <laughs> you call it those people names. So you always had that little getting along. But, but I think it's knowing people. I think it's because you knew everybody there. You see? And that's part of our problems. If, you, if I don't know you, maybe I don't trust you. But if I know you, it's a whole different ballgame. But at the same time, what you're telling me is that there was not any no. illusion that you were equals. I mean, black people were still no. considered black people. That's right. inferior That's right. That's right. to the whites. They were still not equal. We had two different churches. The white Catholic church on this corner, St. Francis Xavier, black church on the next corner. You passed in front of the white church, waved, went to your church. And the same with school? Same with school. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the school you went to. I went to Catholic school because my daddy, my parents were, my daddy was staunch Catholic. Daddy was, I think, more Catholic than the Pope. You couldn't do anything if you didn't do what the Catholics say do. So we went to Catholic schools. And this was strange in Madisonville. Um, they'll probably kill me for saying this, but it was true. Uh, you know, there were so many different biases, and you learn that in life, people are biased about We were Catholics. Well, we were not allowed to associate with non-Catholics. We couldn't do that. We, we couldn't be friends with non-Catholics. Even, even if they, it didn't matter whether they were black or white, it was a matter of being Catholic or not Catholic. Mm -hmm. 